Arthur Idala, criminal defense attorney, uh, famed criminal defense attorney, joining us now. Uh, boy, it sure feels like he's getting special treatment. Well, I mean, you can look at it that way. You can look at it. You want to give the law enforcement people the benefit of the doubt that they're crossing all their T's and dotting all their I's. But I will agree with you. It's kind of been a long time now. I mean, this is a high profile case and we should not be ignorant and think like, oh, all cases are treated equal. Of course, they're not. Um, and so you would think that this would jump the line and in the ballistics lab, in the medical examiner's office, and that the reports would have been issued already. I mean, the medical examiner's report, it's five months old. It's, it's not issued. You know, when you do an appeal in federal court, you have 91 days, you have three months, and, you know, someone else's life is on the line, a defendant's life is on the line. So if you could do a, a criminal appeal in 91 days, you should be able to do a medical examiner's report. Not much changes in 91 days. They can get any test results back in, in three months. It's been five months. So we would like to know what's happened. They have, Leland, though, re re released a lot of evidence, but, including it is, a 200-plus page report. And I know you've read through, through most, if not all of it. Um, as the more evidence comes out, does it look better or worse for Baldwin from a criminal standpoint? I, I would say it looks better for him. It doesn't look like um, it's really, he was assured and, and had the right to rely upon the professionals around him that the weapon that he received was a cold, that's the word they use, a cold, had cold ammunition in it, meaning it had blanks in it, uh, the, the, you know, it, Reading the report, it seems like really they're focusing on everyone else who was involved prior to Alec Baldwin having that weapon handed to him, from the manufacturer to the people who actually put the, the, the name on the box and was the, the box itself uh, mislabeled, to all the runners who hold things, the people who tested it the day before, and then the people who trained him with it. Yeah. Uh, most of the information actually doesn't have to do with Alec Baldwin, except... He admits that he pulled back the trigger. I'm sorry, he pulled back the hammer, but never pulled the trigger. And he's he's uh, basically kind of cross-examined by a detective and says, "Well, we, to pull we, back we the have trigger, that. We, have we actually we actually have that soundbite. Here, here you go. Yeah, out. And then they take it, I guess it clears, the barrel clears, the whole turn and cock the gun over here. I turn and cock the gun, the gun goes off. It should have been a cold gun with no rounds inside or dummy rounds, cosmetic rounds, no flash. I take the gun out slowly, I turn, I cock the pistol, bang, it goes over, she hits the ground, she goes down. Hmm. Uh, and we, and we, and we look, have video of it, tragedy. they released that, yeah. This, it's... It, you, the reason we wanted to have you on for this, you've got both the legal side of this, but also the public relations side of it, because you represented a lot of high-profile uh, defendants and, and folks who've had issues uh, with criminal cases. Here's what Baldwin also said the de to the detectives just after the shooting about how he wanted to go on in life now that he had killed someone. Take a listen. You know, you know what I am is someone who I don't want to do this for I'm the one holding the gun in my hand, and everybody was supposed to have taken care of handing a cold gun. I don't want to do this for a living anymore. I don't want to be a public person. Since then, attends the Ripple of Hope Award Gala, shooting a new movie in London, shooting a new mo mo movie in Italy, Broadway red carpet appearance, uh, for which we have a picture of five days ago. Or is any of doing any well, of these things a good idea? Well, let's say he's changed his mind about not being yeah, a public person. He did, though, Leland. Didn't he, didn't he buy a house, like, up in Vermont, like, in the middle of nowhere or something like that? Yeah. I believe he did. Um, and, look, th those are audio tapes, like, right after this, this tragedy took place. You know, I'm in the middle of a murder trial as we speak. You know, what happens the moments after and even the, the, the days after, people often change their perspective and change their attitude in weeks and months later. The one thing that's not going to change here is there will be a report written by law enforcement ultimately with all of the findings in it from the FBI to the uh, to the medical examiner and it will be given to a prosecutor in Santa Fe and then that's the who's going to have the hot potato is the prosecutor to determine if anybody gets charged Alec Baldwin or anyone else for any type of criminally negligent homicide or any kind of reckless or negligent criminal act and that's we just have to wait until the investigation is over and they render a decision
as you point out, uh, waiting for a while, which is unusual in cases uh, like this. Arthur, we appreciate you taking time, especially while you're involved in another case. It's always good to see you, my friend. It's a pleasure. Keep up the great work, Leland. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure is all ours. When we come, thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.